Late last year, my rental car was broken into in downtown San Francisco, and among the six bags stolen was my 2015 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. Now, I went back and forth about do I want the new Touch Bar version to replace it with the insurance money that I was gonna get for it, or should I just stick with the older version that has all the ports? Did I really wanna deal with all these dongles and accessories and adapters just to have the faster version, or should I just stick with the previous one? Well, I decided to bite the bullet and get that newer version of the MacBook Pro with the Touch Bar, and thus began the search for all the required adapters to plug in all the things that I need on a daily basis, all the devices, accessories, hard drives, and so on. I needed to be able to plug in regular USB-A devices like external hard drives or tethering my new laptop to a DSLR. I was also missing the built-in SD card reader that the previous model had. I needed my Thunderbolt displays to connect using its Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2. And I lost the HDMI port that easily allowed me to preview videos with clients in person on a TV. Thankfully, Apple left that headphone jack though. Long story short, being an early adopter requires a lot of adapters. Yeah, I went there. To start, I got a few of the first party Apple adapters, one for USB-C male to USB-A female for simple things like charging my iPhone 7 Plus, and one for Thunderbolt 3 male to Thunderbolt 2 female so I could plug in my Thunderbolt displays. Unfortunately, that cable was on back order for two months. Thankfully, during that time frame, b &H Photo reached out to me to try out a few of their Thunderbolt 3 adapters and docking stations from StarTech.com, and pretty much all of my needs for connecting various devices to my new laptop are now solved. First up, I tried their simple Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter, which is perfect for plugging in my Thunderbolt displays and using them as a second monitor on my new MacBook Pro. Next, I went to plug in my MacBook Pro into televisions or monitors, which can either be at 4K HDMI at 30 Hertz or 4K through a display port at 60 Hertz, and they sell adapters that can handle dual screens of either while only using one USB port of your computer and not even needing AC power. So these are great too. And lastly, my favorite thing I've been testing out that they sent over is an entire Thunderbolt 3 dock. It has almost all the ports that the late 2016 MacBook Pro that I bought should probably already have if it was truly for professionals. But some of the ports on the dock are, there's one USB-C port, so you don't lose that. Two USB-A ports, one of which is fast charging, if your phone can do that. There's two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a display port, audio in and out, and there's even an ethernet port if you're maybe live streaming and can't afford to have the Wi-Fi go down. This bigger dock does need AC power, but for the amount you can plug into it, I'm not surprised that it needs that. The only missing piece I bought to simplify my setup and so I could leave this older compact flash and SD card reader at home with my Mac Pro while I was on the road was to order this SanDisk SD card reader that plugs into USB-C and it goes up to UHS-2, so it's super fast when backing up files and I'm pretty much using an SD card to laptop connection every day for putting photos and videos on it. So I just, I invested the $25 for this thing too. And lastly, for the video and photo files I'm currently working on, I picked up a 500 gigabyte Samsung T3 solid state drive. It's super fast for reading and writing and transferring files. And it's much better than spinning hard drives for that sort of thing, but you do end up paying way more for that. So this was $200 for only 500 gigabytes. I could get something eight times the size at four terabytes for about half the price, for about $100 normally. But, you know, if you're working with 4K files, 50 megapixel photos, you know, it's going to be worth it to do that. And I got two different cables. I got a USB-C to USB-C for plugging into my new laptop and a USB-C to USB-A so I can plug this into my Mac Pro easily. While I'd love to envision a future where everything I need plugs into my laptop using USB-C, I really don't know how far away that is and what am I supposed to do in the meantime? I have to plug in HDMI or other Thunderbolt versions. I know I have a lot of now docks and, and dongles just to do what I need to do with my laptop when I'm on the road or when I'm back in the office to make videos and run my business. And I don't know if it was worth it for Apple to do this just to have a little bit thinner computer or more battery space because when you're a pro user, you know, you need to plug stuff into your laptop to do your job. So these are just my experiences with Dongle Life. And this isn't an ad. I'm not getting paid to talk about these things, but 
these are just some of the options out there for someone that has one of these newer laptops and needs to plug in a bunch of different stuff to them. A special thank you to b &H for sending these out for me to test and to share my experiences with you guys. For more on how to make better videos and make a great living while doing so, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. You can watch our most recent video that just came out on the left over here. And to take any of my free courses on how to make better videos, just go up here and sign up. I've been Caleb Logic of DIY Video Guy, and I'll see you later.